Hello and welcome to the Cabinet of Doll Curios, where you will find creations of horror, beauty and the perfectly imperfect. I thought I'd make it easy on myself to begin with by doing the teeth and eyeballs pre-baked so they were hard when I pushed it into the, the skull, the gums, the eye sockets of the evil goblin. And it worked, I think I'll do this like this in the future. You may notice how nice and smooth my pieces of Super Scorpio are. That's because I've treated myself to a pasta maker. Not for cooking, but for rolling out smooth bits of clay. What else? The eyeballs are made up of Super Sculpey and then pressed into it is 12mm glass cabochons and then behind the cabochons is a printed out iris that I did on my home computer. All of which is fine to go into the oven when I bake my goblin head.
I can't help thinking that this reminds me of something. Perhaps it's the snakes of clay bit. I think this looks pretty weird at this stage, but it does get better, honest. I'm probably not trying to suffocate the goblin because it's not real. But um, using cling film or saran wrap, and then when you get your tools and dig into the material to make lines, wrinkles, it sort of makes the indentation a bit more organic. Ugh, ears, need we say more? You don't have to wear gloves while doing Super Sculpey. I just find that it helps eliminate, well, doesn't cause any fingerprints at all which to me is easier than going over the whole piece in clay softener and missing bits. I can actually make cute dolls and draw cute dolls and create cute dolls, but I find horror themed things in general um, just interest me a lot more. I love horror films uh, and I love writing and drawing and creating horror inspired pieces. I hope you'll agree that as soon as you start putting the blush on, i.e. pan pastels in this case, things really start to just jump out, come alive. I, I, I just think, I love this process. <laughs> 